Hello friends, Simpilot here. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. This is the 10th episode of our tutorial series. And with this one, we are going to wrap up the Garmin G3000 unit and the turboprop aircraft. Unless if you guys want to see the Cessna 208 Grand Caravan in action. So let me know in the comments down below if you want to see the Cessna 208 before we finish the turboprop aircraft. Also, uh, I'd like to thank everybody who subscribed to the channel. The channel passed 350 subscribers as of today. That's uh, amazing. I'd like to thank everybody who commented, uh, asked questions and tried to be in, in touch uh, with me uh, to, through the videos. And I want to remind you one more time that now I have a Discord channel that you can join and ask your questions and I check it a couple times a day. So if you want to connect me directly and ask your questions while I'm online, uh, please don't forget the link. Will, don't forget to subscribe. The link to the Discord channel will be in the video description. So today is going to be a little bit longer tutorial than my usual tutorials and I might end up breaking this into three parts because uh, we have a lot of ground to cover today and like we did with G1000 this is going to be a comprehensive tutorial about the navigational or aeronautical charts uh, the flight planning part using the G3000's uh, FMS flight management system and flying the route taking a look at the departure charts, arrival charts, as well as the approach charts. And I have a different tool that I will be showing the charts from, a different charts resource, uh, which is a paid subscription. Uh, and I think that's the best one around uh, when it comes to charts uh, and navigation data. So we will be looking at that and I think it will make more sense to wrap everything up when you see the charts visually along with the route like we did with Sky Vector but in a different uh, way. So without further ado, as you see we are loaded into the sim but we will come back to the simulator when we finish our flight planning with using SimBrief, that's the first part, and then coming over here, taking a look at the charts, maybe even before coming here, and then entering that flight into the TBM 930's uh, flight management computer. Without further ado, let's go to SimBrief and start planning our flight. So when you log into SimBrief, you go to the dispatch, my flight plan, which will carry you to this screen, and then you will enter a new flight. Okay. So the airline, obviously if you are flying an airline route, you can put that airline, airline's ICAO code here, like for Delta Airlines, it's DAL. Delta, Alpha, Lima, um, for KLM it's Kilo, Lima, Mike, but today because we are flying with a TBM 930 I'm gonna put TSP for the sim pilot and then our flight number will be the number of subscribers to the channel. So our departure today is Echo Delta Delta Hotel which is Hamburg airport in Germany and our arrival will be Echo Delta Delta Tango, which is Berlin Tegel Airport. So the airframe, Simbrief has a number of aircraft that you can pick from, but the one we are interested in today is the TBM 900, which is a good substitute for 930. And this aircraft is used to calculate the fuel needs and the zero fuel weight, so on and so forth. So, another thing I want to point is the cloud symbols about the airports. When you hover over them, it is going to give you the weather information, QNH, winds, so on and so forth. And this information will be also printed on the operational flight plan when we generate it. So this is all you need to do to create your flight plan. The SimBrief will do the rest. And the other thing is the navigation data cycle, which is also known as AREC cycle. 
I am at the current cycle because uh, of the Navigraph subscription. It's you can unlock it if you have a Navigraph subscription. Otherwise, you have to use what Simbrief gives you. Well, for this tutorial, I will include the waypoints uh, in the description field of the video so that you can use the same waypoints if you want to uh, practice the same flight yourself. So when you enter all this data, obviously you can change the departure and arrival runway, but Simbrief is guessing that by looking at the weather information and trying to guess which runways will be available. Uh, and I will keep it with the assigned runway. You can also change the number of passengers. As you see, uh, TBM can hold up to six passengers. You can add additional cargo if you like. Uh, you can change the zero fuel weight, but none of these will be uh, really making sense for us because Microsoft has its own uh, way of calculating the weight and sometimes it doesn't match with Simbrief. So we will do it in the simulators weight and balance screen. So let's generate our operational flight plan and take a look at what information this gives us. As you see now we have our operational flight plan, our destination, our alternate destination if we cannot land here for any reason is Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel which is uh, Kastrup Airport in Copenhagen, Denmark. Our flight level is 23,000 feet and the air time for this flight based on this flight level and the aircraft is going to be 42 minutes and the block time with landing and taxiing and departure is going to be an hour of 10 minutes all right and this is our route so we have our seed as Rama for Delta Rama is our transition after our departure Zulu 9 or 9 or 8 is an airway like we have seen in um, Skyvector. Remember the Quebec uh, Victor Airways that we discussed. P10 is our waypoint after this airway. Uh, we are going to reach P10 using this airway. And then Lima 619er is going to take us to Vivis. And then from there our arrival starts with VB1 Alpha. This is our Star Standard Terminal arrival route. And it's also shown on the map too. And down below you get to see the operational flight plan. And you can also open it as a PDF document. What this tells you. So this top section is going to give you your information about the flight, the date, your tail number, your flight number, and uh, airline code, aircraft type, maximum takeoff weight, estimated takeoff weight, uh, so on and so forth. This is the flight steps, Echo Delta, Delta Hotel, flight level 0230, which is 23,000 feet. And this is your fuel prediction. So the sim according to Simbrief, we have to have uh, 1,000 pounds of fuel on board and if we go back and take a look at here this is where you set your um, units so my units are set to pounds because Microsoft Simulator Flight Simulator can use pounds or gallons there are no metric units as of now in the sim and that's why I just changed it from kilograms to pounds so this is a thousand pounds fuel that we need to uh, complete this flight down below, this is the route description, Hamburg, runway 15, your seed, standard instrument departure, waypoints, waypoints, airways, and then star, standard terminal arrival route, and then Berlin, Tegel Airport, runway 08 left is where we are going to land. I don't usually pay attention to any other information uh, on this, there is a lot. Uh, I usually use this passenger information for airliners if I'm flying an airliner. But basically what this is saying is we need 1,000 pounds of fuel. The aircraft's weight is 5,779 pounds. And the payload because of the passengers will be 
another 1,150 pounds and our takeoff weight will be 6,699 pounds. All right. So this information over here, we will come back and take a look at this when we are planning our flight. But what this gives you is this gives you the flight level at that uh, waypoint where you need to be in terms of your vertical profile and it gives you the distance like it's uh, it's it's adding up 23 miles and then 23 I'm sorry 7 and then from there another 4 miles to Ramar and then 12 miles to here 13 miles to here 10 miles to here so on so forth uh, this is going to give you some true air speed and ground speed information which I don't really look at and this is going you to give you the wind information at each waypoint at the flight level this M023 is the um, the temperature I'm sorry no this is not the temperature uh, this is the temperature positive 04 is the temperature at that flight level oops no I'm sorry negative zero one is the temperature at that flight level this top one is the fluid temperature as you see here it gives you what this is um, and I think this is the wind information for climb at each waypoint top of climb top of descent and these are the waypoints that we will pass through on our route. Uh, this is the flight plan for ATC. You can use this for, let's say, VATSIM. If you are planning your flight on VATSIM and you need to submit your flight plan, this is something you can use there. And this is the weather information. So at Hamburg, currently, uh, winds are from 150 at 9 knots. Air temperature is 15 degrees, uh, dew point is 10, QNH is 0, 09 or 9 or 8. And for the destination, which is the Tegel Airport, uh, winds are variable at 2 knots, so it means the distance, the, the, the magnitude, not the magnitude, um, the direction of the wind is changing, but it's uh, magnitude is 2 knots, air temperature is 15 degrees Celsius and dew point is 11 degrees and the QNH is 1002 so that's the weather information and from here I think um, that's about it for the operation of flight plan so charts so this is as I said navigraph charts when we go into this flights menu here now I can add a new flight and the good thing about this is I can import it from Simbrief now as you see our route is printed on the map and the colors are telling us that this is our seed and these are also going to match uh, with the colors of the charts if I open the menu and see the seed if you take a look at the color here that's a matching color so that's our seed out of Hamburg and then Ramar that's where our initial uh, flight starts these are our waypoints Ramar, Nusku, Laszlo, Piten and Vibis finally and our star is a green color so that green is our star and then the approach is sort of a brownish color and we see that over here with dash with um, not with as a dash dashed line okay so the other good thing that Navigraph lets you have is if I come over here and click our departure it zooms in and I can now click this button which will overlay the departure chart and by doing this we see our route and how it's followed on the chart which is I believe a really good way of 
uh, taking a look at uh, the charts and uh, there is no other tool that has this function this is one of the unique features of uh, Navigraph and I have to say I am not affiliated with Navigraph uh, or sponsored by them uh, I paid with my own money and this is my unbiased personal opinion about Navigraph if you can afford it that's a great tool but you don't necessarily have to have Navigraph to enjoy flight simulation so like before, let's take a look at our chart. This is runway 150, uh, which has the heading of 150. The runway names are coming from the heading. So 15 means the heading is close to 150 degrees. And same goes for 228. This is runway uh, 23, 048. This is runway 5, so on and so forth. So what we do, our departure says we follow the runway heading until Delta Hotel 208 and it says we need to be about 2300 feet when we reach to this waypoint. From there we take a left turn to course 032 and follow Delta Hotel 209er and follow that course or follow that track for 12.1 miles to Delta Hotel 212. When we reach here, we take a right turn to course 057, follow that course for 13.1 miles, and we reach Delta Hotel 155, take another right turn to 119er, and this says 4000 here, so this means this is the minimum altitude that we can travel safely along this airway like we have seen in Sky Vector. We follow this at 10.2 miles and initially, I'm sorry, eventually we will hit our transition or exit point uh, for our standard instrument departure which is Ramar. And from there we follow our waypoints to Nusku and as you see here Zulu 9908 is an airway and it's black. Remember Sky Vector, black colored airways are uh, VOR airways and we see a VOR station right here. So we follow that one to P10. Take a left turn to 089er, follow Lima 619er airway. which is right there to Vibis and we see 4000 again but we will be well, well above 4000 when we are here because our cruising altitude is 23000 feet so we eventually hit Vibis and our star which is this green colored uh, route here starts at this starts at this waypoint which tells me that we can go ahead and overlay the chart and take a look at it Let's put it there and as you see this is our star now and right away we see a restriction here maximum speed is 280 knots at Wibis and our altitude needs to be below flight level 170 and above flight level 120 this tells me that we have a 5000 feet altitude um, restriction we need to be below that one and above that one and from Vibis we take a right turn to 168 follow that for 10 miles until we reach, reach Lanum and you see IAF here so that tells me that Lanum is our initial approach fix which means I can uh, before hitting this waypoint I have to activate the approach uh, mode in the FMC and I can expect to capture the localizer here because uh, even if we can capture here it's not gonna line us up with the runway but this is our uh, initial approach fix so I need to start configuring my airplane for landing when I hit here and then I have to activate the approach mode in the FMC not the approach mode in the autopilot and we have an altitude restriction and a speed restriction as well 
maximum airspeed is 250 knots below flight level 140 and we have to be above flight level 100 we follow this course 134 for 23.3 miles and it says take VOR so we should expect to receive the signal from the VOR station somewhere here I think that's the distance that uh, the VOR station transmits to so when we hit Delta Tango 600 we need to reduce our speed to 220 knots or below and we need to be about 4000 feet and in 3.5 uh, miles we need to descend to 3000 feet and this is where we should expect to you know capture the localizer and then the glide slope but we need to take a look at our final approach fix if I don't know if it's printed here but I can't I can't see that here it should oh there it is final approach fix so by Ligba which is the final approach fix before I get here I have to configure full flaps landing gear down and I need to be ready to capture the glide slope and start descending into the runway which we will probably see in our um, approach chart any other restrictions here other than speed fly the transition as continuous descent approach use of our nav transition only when cleared by ATC so this means I'm gonna start my descent way over here from my flight level 230 I will descend below 17,000 feet by the time I get here keep descending to 14,000 feet or below and I would probably suggest to be at flight level 100 to be on the safe side and I will have 23 miles to descend to 4,000 feet which is a 6,000 feet difference from 10,000 to 4,000 and 23 miles is quite enough to descend safely without uh, nose diving and I will keep descending I'm not gonna stop my descent and that's why I'm not going to use the Microsoft Flight Simulator's ATC because I'm not gonna wait on ATC to clear me to lower altitudes it's not working quite well right now so we will keep our descent that means I can set my altitude to 3000 way here and control my V speed to be safely in between these numbers until I reach here and 4000 or above and 3000 and above and hopefully I will uh, be at 3000 by this very point fully configured full flaps landing gear ready to intercept the glide slope and from there we look at the approach chart which I think I can pull from the menu on the side Tegel approach ILS or localizer runway 08 left let's overlay this one and take a look at it so remember our initial approach fix as depicted here is Lanum and there are two Lanum waypoints so this means I should be seeing two waypoints in the aircraft's um, flight plan menu uh, as my transition and I'm gonna see which one I should pick to properly select the same uh, approach in the FMC so this is pretty much the same we descend down to 3000 before we get to our final approach fix which is I believe this one over here Ligba let's see yes that's the Maltese cross so this tells me that this is the final approach fix and I'm I have to be ready to capture the glide slope and start descending into the runway any other things that I need to be careful about is uh, the decision altitude which I will use so this is category C aircraft category D aircraft uh, cat 1 localizer glide slope out we are not using this one this is uh, for our nav I believe category 3 uh, we will probably use 214 uh, which goes for airliners and there are cats category C aircraft and TBM is a cat B but that's okay we will use 214 feet as our decision altitude that means when we hit that altitude we need to have the runway uh, in sight otherwise we have to do a missed approach which is described over here missed approach clown bone runway track which is 
079 final approach course to 3000 feet at 4 miles from TGL VOR which is this one so that means we have to tune this and start tracking the distance if we end up doing a missed approach and turn left over there from here that's 4 miles to this VOR station turn left climb 5000 feet via Lima Whiskey Bravo VOR to Venom so that means we are climbing to 5000 feet trekking all the way back to here and doing this all over again trying a second uh, ILS landing after our um, missed approach but I think showing the charts lots like this is going to make uh, great sense and this is the uh, the localizer glide slope out where we should expect to lecture, capture the localizer so on and so forth and it says TGL DME 9 miles at 2770 feet and this is the speed uh, table we have a 3 degree glide slope and ground speed if we are at 120 knots we need to descend 637 feet per minute but the G3000 will do it for us so we are not worried about those we are doing an ILS precision ILS approach alright guys so let's jump into the cockpit and start planning our flight now I think we can come back to the charts to remember the restrictions especially for the star so I'm gonna overlay that before we leave the screen so it's ready for us when we come back all right we are in the aircraft it's cold and dark but TBM is really easy to start aircraft so you move up the crash bar and then turn the batteries on and what happens with TBM is you see the screens turned on instantaneously it shouldn't be like this I think this is a bug that Microsoft needs to fix so if I turn the battery off and turn it on see what it does it does a self-test and a boot screen as you see this should have happened right away at the first time i turned on the battery switch but it's not working like that for some and then to turn on the mfd you press that button and it will come on so from here we turn on the main generator and then we turn on the auxiliary boost pump and then we turn on the engine starter and we wait test. Okay. so now we are waiting and monitoring the NG when it hits 13% we will move the throttle to low idle and wait for NG to reach 50% as you hear the engine is pulling ITT is rising which is the internal turbine, tu uh, turbine temperature we are getting close to 50% on the NG we passed 50 and now I move it to the high aldeal and then right away to flight idle so that's how you start the engine of the TBM so when you start it you go back to the overhead panel you turn on the auxiliary boost pump to auto and then the fuel selector which is this button right here fuel tank selection to auto so that you don't end up with fuel imbalance and then you turn on the autopilot and I think that is it to start it you are done obviously you turn on the nail lights before you start the engine and I usually forget to do it so after that you turn the bleed on and then turn on the initial separator on and it says pedo heat and stall heat that's a warning the weather is warm enough we don't need to worry it's 22 degrees so I'm not expecting any icing and the inertial separator I did get some questions about it what inertial separator does is I'm gonna get out outside and it's gonna get a little bit loud but I want to show you so the intake you see here is sucking air into the engine so inertial separator closes a flap that's behind this in intake which prevents the engine from sucking in the dirt 
from the ground or any debris that might damage the engine okay so now we have a successful engine start let's go and start uh, to plan our flight let me zoom in and resize the screen so that we see both screens under the MFD menu flight plan our origin is going to be Echo Delta Delta Hotel enter that our destination is Echo Delta Delta Tango enter that now we need to start adding waypoints and we are going to select our departure arrival and approach as the last thing after entering all the waypoints so first one is going to be Ramar so that's Romeo Alpha Romeo oops not Romeo Romeo Alpha Mike Alpha Romeo Ramar is there and it says waypoint duplicates this is the one we are looking for the other one is too far away so we are selecting that one and after Ramar add another waypoint this time it is going to be Nusku so that's November uniform Sierra Golf uniform enter that one we keep going down after Nusku it is Lazlu Lima Alpha Sierra Lima uniform that's in there and then from there P10 so Papa India Tango Echo November and I think the uh, last waypoint is Vibis so we will add it after P P10 and Victor India Bravo India Sierra enter that and we are done with the waypoints so even before entering our um, approach departure and arrival let's take a look at the the altitudes our vertical profile so if i go back to sim brief it says so these are the waypoints out of hamburg at ramar it says this is my altitude which says flat level here so that's the top one 225 so that's what i have to enter to Ramar 22,500 feet so at Nusku take a look at it 230 Laszlo 230 P10 230 and then finally Vibis 270 so we cruise we are at our cruise level until Vibis so that means this is 23,000 feet at um, Nusku Laszlo 23,000 feet and let's take a look at the chart and remember Vibis we need to be below 70 even if the profile is given us says uh, different so we will put 23,000 to P10 and after P10 we have 13 miles to reach Vibis I'm sorry uh, 19 miles and I think we will be safe we can descend more than 6,000 at 19 miles but I am more thinking like flight level 120 to be on the safe side so let's just do that and see how we can manage to get that done when we are flying so 12,000 feet so because we have a restriction and I'm not planning to use the ATC because when you fly when you plan your flight through here the in-game ATC doesn't get your cruise altitude and you end up asking for increase in the cruise altitude and it just it is it is not working well enough to use it uh, during flights so I'm going to avoid it for this reason as well as the continuous descent uh, requirement for our uh, arrival and approach so we are done with the vertical profile until our uh, waypoint here so at Lanum we need to be at for like level 140 let's see how it does it uh, and if the data is matching so let's go back procedures departure our departure is Rama for Delta oops H is down here let's double check Rama for Delta so let's select that one transition we don't have and we see the waypoints 208, 209, 212, 155 from R and that's uh, same as the chart if we go here 
and overlay that on the chart uh, on the flight plan as you see 208 209 212 155 from R so that's exactly matching and runway 15 so let's load this one our arrival which is going to be VB1 alpha as we have seen on the chart and on the flight plan so maybe one alpha it's right here our transition we don't have one maybe slanum 600 605 league bus 605 league bus so arrival overlay that one more time last blue p10 vbs lanum 600 605 league bar and red bar so a little bit a little bit mismatch there i guess instead of league bar they put red bar but that's i think that's i think fine or i don't know it's a little mismatch there but it's okay it's looking okay so far we load that one and finally our approach and remember what I said our about our approach um, which is this guy over here as you see oh I'm sorry not this guy uh, this guy see was it this one I'm confused now let me overlay the oh, okay it was this one so lanum lanum you see we have two lanums two waypoints with the same name so let's take a look how it looks like here approach transition so that's going to be our transition either this one or that one and uh, when i open here voila there is two of them i am going to select the second one if this doesn't work we will come back and select the first one ILS 8 left lanum and then not activated yet we will but not now load and let's zoom out and take a look at it to see if it's matching what we have in simbrief and to, to pan the map you press on this button or knob and then it will give you a touchpad that you can move the cursor around and you know pan it as as you like and maybe zoom and take a look at how, how good it matches with your flight plan and when I zoom out here uh, it looks pretty accurate to me it looks pretty accurate so I'm happy with this except after P10 I don't see a Vivis so that might be because of that second one we selected maybe we have to select the first one so let's just go and try the first one let's load this one and see how it looks like did it fix it oh my god it's completely messed it up so let's go back and go back to our original one which is this guy over here it should hopefully fix this and let's see how it looks like now Okay, I see P10 now. Laszlo, P10, and Viv oh, I don't see Vivis. I still don't see Vivis. So what we can do is, we can go back, go to home, go to our flight plan, and let's take a look here. So P10. After P10, we have to go to Vivis. So I can click P10, insert after, and then type Victor India Bravo India Sierra. Enter. I can't remember if I forgot to enter it or what happened there. So we should see a Vivis here now. And I still don't see it, I believe. Huh. What about here? Yep, there is no Vivis. Interesting. I might leave it alone or I know it is going to be after what or before if it's if before before Lanum we have Vivis so I can do this I can go here insert before Victor India Bravo India Sierra enter and 
keep saying duplicates found. I don't understand what's going on there. A little bit interesting. And it messed up the whole flight plan as you see. Um, I need to fix this. Okay, so this is also learning. So let's go here, remove the approach. And remove. On flight plan. Okay, we have Vibus over there now, which we need to set the altitude for. And then we have this arrival, which I am also going to remove and fix it. Remove, hopefully. Home, flight plan. Yeah, that's there. Where well, it's. Oh, I see what's going on. It entered Vivis here. I need to delete this. Remove. Now, I don't know why it did that. I have no idea. It might be a bug or something. But now I think we are good. And let's take a look here. At Vivis, we need to be, what, 12,000? That's what we discussed, right? 1, 2, 0, 0, 0. Enter. Whew. That was challenging. Let's pick up our arrival again. Maybe one alpha on my second. One on my eight left. Load. And I think this is where I'm losing the the waypoint. Oh no, it's there. Okay, looking good so far. And let's do our approach. Are this eight left? Lanum. Load. Please do not miss it this time. Yeah, as you see, it's deleting that waypoint, which is Vibis, which I'm not happy about. So, after P10, why it is not entering it? So, let's try to enter it after this one. One more time, and see if it changes anything. It does not. Interesting. And these altitudes, I believe, are okay. Five, five, four thousand. Where is my tree? Big but tree. So okay, we're good. We're good for the approach vertical profile. Only thing I cannot get in here is the Vibis waypoint. So maybe. I should add that. Oh, because P10 is our. So P10, previous. it's interesting that I cannot put anything here. That might be something about this arrival. Ah. Not sure what's going on there, guys. I'm sorry. But clearly, I see the waypoint here. Maybe one alpha, but I'm not sure why it's not putting it in there. Can we just maybe uh, come here, select it again, and see if it changes anything? Load. Oh, I see P10 there, but not with this. That's very strange. That is very strange. Well, Whatever. I think I will leave it alone. Try to figure out offline while I'm not recording. I don't want to keep you guys too long. But I think when we configure our uh, flight screens, we are good and we know we need to climb straight to 2300 and uh, keep climbing because we need to eventually reach 23,000 feet at Ramar. Uh, when we are departing because I'm not going to use ATC I'm not gonna follow what they say and ignore, ignore ATC complete for this flight and set 23,000 here usually you don't do this you wait for ATC to give you some altitude clearance um, active nav source is going to be FMS right 
and then PFD settings. Where's my PFD settings? Oh, there it is. Other PFD settings, wind, option three, back, angle of attack, I'm gonna keep it at auto. I don't want to have that uh, there continuously. And I think after setting the barometric pressure, we are pretty much ready to taxi to the runway. All right, guys, so for this tutorial I think I'm going to cut it here for part one and in part two we will fly the departure and arrival along with the ILS approach and I think we can get away and complete this section or this tutorial series for G3000 in this last two parts uh, which is this one where we fly, planned the flight and took a look at the charts and then we will fly, fly the actual route in the next uh, video and we, that will finalize our um, G3000 series unless you want to see Cessna 208 Grand Caravan as I said at the beginning in action which has a G1000 unit not G3000 but it is the, it is the last turboprop aircraft that we haven't touched in Microsoft Flight Simulator okay so one more time I'd like to remind if you haven't subscribe to the channel please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications to get notified for the future episodes and if this is the first video you have watched these uh, tutorials are designed to build on the knowledge from the previous episode I highly suggest you to go and check the uh, other video or the, the playlist which I have the link to that playlist in the description and it will be also at the end of the video I want to remind the discord channel one more time I'll put the link and the invitation to the discord channel down below in the description field of this video if you want to join me on discord and ask your questions uh, it's much more easier for me to respond on discord rather than you know through the comments over YouTube not to say that I'm not liking them I do like those comments but uh, just you know discord is easier okay guys I think this is going to be it for today I will see you in the next video